Hi everybody, my name is Hannah and this is Pepper and Pine and today I want to share with you the Waldorf Homeschool Curriculum for Grade 3 by Live Education. Today's video is part of a series of videos for the third grade. In other videos I show you my children's main lesson books from this year. I also have a video that shares the supplies that you'll need for third grade. I also have one that has the books and resources that we use in order to supplement this curriculum. And I also have another video that shows you all the handwork projects for the third year. All right, so today we're going to dive into the curriculum. So the first thing you might notice about this curriculum is that it's quite small. It comes with six different main lesson books, and these are going to be your main lesson blocks for the year. So you get literature, grammar, spelling, and word families for the third year, Hebrew myths and culture, creation and patriarchs, Hebrew myths and culture, prophets and kings, Time, Weight, Measure, and Money, The Math of Practical Life, Humanity on Earth, Shelter, Clothing, Farming, and Myths and Culture, a Cod and Sumer. One thing I did was to label the entire curriculum. I have different colors for each grade from K through 8th, and on the front I say which grade it is because only one book actually says that it's third year. Originally I was writing in the grade on the side here, but when all of my curriculum was lined up in my bookcase, it was really hard to see which book went to which year, and this way it makes it a lot easier. So I just have it in rainbow order from kindergarten through eighth grade. Each of them have a different color, and it makes it a lot easier to find the books that I need. All right, so we're going to dive into the curriculum. We're going to start out with this book first, Literature, Grammar, Spelling, and Word Families for the Third Year. So there are a few blank pages in this curriculum, which is great because it is an opportunity for you to lesson plan as you go along, and I definitely took advantage of that. So I have a lot of my notes initially here and then throughout the curriculum. That way I could customize this curriculum to suit our family's needs, our religious needs, and our cultural background. All right, so the table of contents is going to go through all the different topic areas in this main lesson book. Now, this main lesson book is going to be a little bit different than the other main lesson books in that these lessons, the spelling lessons, the grammar lessons, they are ones that are usually short, maybe less than 15 minutes that can occur daily and can complement the main lesson of the day. All right, so the beginning pages are a great introduction, not just to the philosophy in general, but how to use this particular main lesson book. So if you're unfamiliar with the Waldorf philosophy or you need a refresher, these pages are going to explain why these subjects are chosen and how to teach them for the third grade student. The third grade student is going through the nine year change. And so this curriculum is going to meet those developmental changes and provide information and stories that are going to comfort the student as well as reflect and mirror the feelings that they are going through. So I'll explain that more as we get to some of the other main lesson books. All right, so for spelling for this year, it's going to cover 19 different vowel groups, and all of them are going to be listed in the beginning pages of the curriculum, but only the first couple of pages are going to explain how to do the main lesson. So it's not divided up into day one, lesson one, and so on and so forth until this, com this book is complete. It actually just lays out how to do the lesson, and then it provides all the different lessons that are going to occur over the next year. So the three to four to five day learning cycle with spelling is a little bit different than some of the other subjects or maybe different than the way you've approached spelling in the past. So there, the example that's given here is that on the first day, the teacher will present an entire sentence that contains words from the spelling list for the week, but that the content of the sentence actually relates to the main lesson for the day. Now this takes a little bit of preparation and once you get into the rhythm of it, it, it goes pretty easily. And then all the words are given here so that you can draw from these words in order to create that one sentence or multiple sentences. So the teacher will present that sentence and then together with the student, the student will write those words into his main lesson book as the teacher is writing it on the chalkboard. If you don't have a chalkboard, you can do it on a dry erase board or just on a piece of paper next to the student. I recommend using the landscape-oriented main lesson books for this year. 
you just want to do a border using crayons you probably will still have the block and stick crayons from the previous year and these are great for adding a border and the crayons are probably a little bit too thick for writing for the third grade student so I would recommend using either the chunky Lyra color pencils or the pencil that's still a little bit thick and if you feel like your student is ready for the smaller pencil you can do that as well all right so together the teacher and the student will write the sentence into the main lesson book and this is the first lesson in spelling because the teacher will ask the student to help spell the words now this only works if the student has had previous knowledge in phonics and the letters of the alphabet and how to put together words so if your student hasn't mastered that yet then you might not want your student to guess at the words because you don't want to instill the bad habit of guessing randomly when it comes to academic information. If it's an educated guess, that's fine, but just random guessing is not a good skill to acquire. On this day, the teacher can also begin to present the other words that follow the same vowel sound rule. So once the teacher and the student have written that sentence into the main lesson book and the teacher has written it onto the chalkboard, then the student can move on to the main lesson for the day. The following day is when you're going to analyze that sentence. And the teacher may ask, what is the third word in the sentence? Or what is the last word? How is the last word in the sentence spelled? Or what letters do heaven and earth share in common? And that's the first step to breaking down that sentence and those words and learning how to spell them. So these lessons you can see are really short and when you do them daily, it really starts to hone in on those skills. And doing it with an entire sentence also helps with remembering the spelling words because you can see it in relation to an entire sentence, which also helps with constructing a sentence. You can see what a complete sentence looks like with a capital letter at the beginning of the sentence and a period or some kind of punctuation mark at the end of the sentence. And all of those are really important skills that your student needs to gain, but can do so in a very organic, somewhat easy way. All right, on day three, you're gonna go over association. It's an opportunity to bring up some of the anomaly spellings that may sound the same as the vowel sounds that were presented for this week, but they're spelled differently. And together, the student and the teacher may wish to put together a silly poem or a number of sentences that include some of those anomalies so that the student can begin to learn those unique spellings as well. On the fourth day or the fifth day, depending on how long it takes to cover those particular vowel sounds, but on the final day, you can do a review and you can start out by uh, reciting the sentence that you did earlier on in the week and the student can copy that down into his main lesson book or onto a scratch piece of paper. And you may also wish to do a spelling test at the end of the week. Now, this example covers just one set of vowel sounds, but there are other vowel sounds that have fewer words in them, and you may choose to do multiple vowel sound sets within one week. There's another example given here on how you can go about doing the spelling words as well. Something else that I really like about this particular main lesson book is that it offers a couple other examples on how to help the student remember the spellings of words based on the shape that the word makes. So you can see here how when you outline the shape of the word, you kind of get a visualization of what the word should look like. And this can help the student, especially one who is struggling with spelling. So then it goes in to show the 19 different vowel sounds with the lists of words. And this is an opportunity for the teacher to look ahead at these different groupings of words and to draw out sentences that will coordinate with the main lesson block. All right, then after the spelling, you have an introduction on grammar. Again, there's some information here on the Waldorf approach to teaching grammar. You're gonna start with the basic parts of speech and the initial sentences are going to be very simple and rather short. They're going to contain nouns and verbs, which you can make a complete sentence that way. 
What I really like about the Waldorf approach is that verbs are usually written in red, which is a vibrant color. And if you think of action verbs, you can think of them as being vibrant and movement and action. And the nouns are written in blue, which is more of a sedentary color. And nouns are the things that you see. They're not usually moving. And so I really like the way that color is brought into a grammar lesson. All right, after nouns and verbs, you move into adjectives and adverbs. And when we were doing this part, we colored our adjectives purple since adjectives modify nouns and nouns are blue. And so they just seem to coordinate and then adverbs modify verbs. And so we did our adverbs in orange because we felt like it coordinated with with the red. So that's just something that uh, well, I really like that approach and it's something that you can add into uh, to your lessons. Even if you don't typically do a Waldorf approach, I think that it's a great technique for children to remember those different parts of speech. All right, then you're going to go into the parts of a sentence, the different kinds of sentences, and then towards the back of the book, there's some more information on how to relate the grammar lessons with the other main lesson blocks. All right, so let's move on to another main lesson book. This one's called Time, Weight, Measure, and Money, Math for the Practical Life. What I really love about this curriculum is that it really matches the developmental stages that a child is going through. The third grade student is going through the nine year change, which is somewhat of a traumatic developmental transition. Some of the things that are going on for the nine year student is that there's a sense of loss. Uh, this is a reflection on the student's past as well as an understanding of what's to come for the student. This is the first time that a student truly understands the past. And it's interesting because the Waldorf curriculum also waits until the third year to teach the past tense verbs. Up until this point, a student may know how to use the past tense verbs and may use them, but a deep understanding of them doesn't emerge until about nine or 10 years old. Something else that happens at this time is that time seems to speed up. Uh, prior to this, time seemed to last forever. Summer vacation and the school year seem to be equal time. Uh, but when the student turns nine, they can see that once the school year ends, it feels like it went by so quickly. Something else is that at this point, the student is having some, some opportunities for self-reflection. And oftentimes, this is where a student decides what he or she wants to be. And not in the sense of a career, but just in how he wants to be viewed. So a student may want to be viewed as smart or funny or loving or adventurous. And you can really start to see those traits develop at around nine or 10 years old. There's also a sense of being lost. And what I love about the curriculum is that those sentiments are reflected in the main lesson blocks on the Hebrew myths and culture, the time when Moses and his followers were lost in the desert for 40 years. This really reflects how the student is feeling at that time. Now, in addition to that, and in particular for this main lesson book, as well as for this main lesson book, Humanity on Earth, Shelter, Clothing, and Farming, these two are going to provide the student with the practical necessities for life. If they know how to do practical math, if they know how to farm and build a shelter, it gives them a sense of purpose and comfort to balance out that feeling of lost. All right, so let's dive into this main lesson book. As with all the main lesson books, you have an introduction on how to use this particular main lesson book. It's a great refresher on the Waldorf philosophy. And then it also begins with a story, which I really love. And it's basically a group of people trying to get together to decide on how to make time standard and linear measurement standard. And since they keep showing up at different times because time has not been standardized, they can't figure out whether to standardize time first or linear measurement first and when they realize that they can't all get together at the same time they realize they really must standardize time before they can do anything else and so this really beautiful story is the introduction to the math lessons and it begins with lessons on time so calendar time 
seasonal time, different clocks, sundial, and a water clock. And this is a great opportunity to do some of these hands-on projects. It goes into an artistic representation of time, which I really love. This is doing a spiral with the minutes, hours, day, uh, month, year, and so on. And you can see the spiral get bigger, and it's just a beautiful artistic representation of how we measure time. All right, after the section on time, you get to linear measurement, and then there are lessons that follow for linear measurement. And then the practical math for this year is going to continue with the basic four operations that have been previously learned. So you're going to continue with the four basic math operations. This is a great time to start to solidify the multiplication table and other math facts. And then it finishes off with money and trade. And so this really rounds out some fantastic practical math that's really going to ground the student and give him a sense of comfort. Now I want to point out one thing about doing math within the other main lesson blocks. Though this is separated as a main lesson block, you're also going to be doing math daily. So once the main lesson block is completed, you're going to want to continue with your math facts and the math dealing with the four operations. So you can do this in uh, the form of mental math that you can do daily for about five or 10 minutes. And in the younger years, I used to just do single operation questions. So something like six times four, or uh, how many inches are in a foot, or how many inches are in three feet, uh, how many seconds are in a minute and a half, things like that that don't require a two-step process but still require the student to recall the new information that they've learned and do a little bit of math as well. As the students got older, I would do two-part questions like what is six times four minus five or what is 12 divided by three plus five and those were really simple math questions that were two parts so it required the student to also hold that information in his head so it practiced the memory skills but then at the same time it also kept those skills in math sharp so I really like doing that mental math before doing the main lesson you can also get a number of math games to kind of mix it up a little bit if the mental math gets a little bit dry after a while. And there's a really great book called Number Chains that we have used in the past. That's a little bit more advanced for the third year, but it's another option if you can't come up with enough mental math problems on your own. All right, so let's move on to the next main lesson book. This one's called Humanity on Earth, Shelter, Clothing, and Farming. And this is really going to help the third grade student as he's going through his nine year change. This is going to give some sense of purpose and comfort for the student that he knows how to survive. And this is going to really help during this time of upheaval within the student. All right, so let's begin by going over the different topic areas within this main lesson book. It's divided up into three different parts, shelters and dwellings, farming, and fibers and weaving. Now there are some suggestions on how to do this throughout the year and my suggestion would be to do the shelters and dwellings in either the fall or the spring, to do the farming in the spring and do fibers and weaving in the winter. And this is just a, a rhythm that really worked well for us. In the winter time when the days were shorter and we were spending our evenings at home, especially in areas where it's a little bit cooler and you're just kind of gathering in the family room with the fireplace going, uh, it's really nice to work on your fiber arts and weaving. And so I would recommend doing those things at that time of the year. Farming is great for the spring, although there are lessons in farming that can be learned year round, but doing this in the spring just seems like a time of year where you want to be out anyway, the weather is fair, and doing those lessons at that time of year seem to work really well. Shelters and dwellings work really well in the fall, especially if the weather is good. Now, all of these lessons are hands-on activities and you need to devote quite a bit of time in order to do them. And you also need to preview this book so that you can collect your materials and resources before embarking on these projects. 
All right, so again, it's gonna go over the nine year change and it's going to explain what's going on with the student in far better detail than I have done so far and why these practical activities are offered for the nine year student. It also goes in to show the different main lesson blocks and how to do this particular main lesson block within the other main lesson blocks. The way I organize my year is a little bit different than the way that it's offered in the curriculum. So I encourage you to look at the way that it's offered here and then also decide for yourself what's going to work well for you. This particular main lesson block could go well in conjunction with another main lesson block if you're choosing your afternoons to be devoted to these kinds of activities. In my experience, I have found that to work to some degree, I also found that if I'm homeschooling multiple students, I generally needed the afternoon in order to do the other main lesson block for my other student. So if you're just homeschooling one or two kids that are close in age and you're just gonna do this particular main lesson block, or you're just going to do the third grade year, then you could do your other main lesson blocks in the morning, and then you could reserve this main lesson block for the afternoon, and then you could stretch it for the entire year. All right, so the first lessons are on the first house, and there are some stories written by the author of this curriculum. You could also come up with your own story that reflects your culture or your religion, and we did that often with the third grade year with this curriculum in particular. All right, after that, it's gonna go into a lot of the hands-on projects, and I recommend that you plan ahead for these because you will need additional materials. So there's building of Noah's Ark, and this will directly relate to the main lessons in Akkad and Sumer, which I'll show you soon. And then there are other types of shelters as well as animal houses and simple backyard shelters that can be made with found objects in nature. It also shows examples of how to make your main lesson book for this particular main lesson block. And I really like the way the colors coordinate with the types of homes and the environment that that home would be found in. So you can see these warm colors related to the adobe, which would be found in a hot, arid environment versus the way this main lesson book entry is done with the blues to show a cooler environment where you would mo most likely find this kind of a log cabin. You can see the trees and I really like that attention to detail. All right, so following the lessons on shelters, and you can see there's quite a few more examples, you get to the lessons on farming, which begin with the lessons on grain. So no matter where you are on the planet, there is a staple grain for every culture. One of the teaching principles in the Waldorf curriculum is to start with the whole and then break down to the parts. So for these particular lessons on farming, it suggests starting with the whole pitcher of wheat. And it offers this beautiful story of wheat going from sowing the seed to harvesting the wheat to baking bread. So again, this would be a great opportunity to bring in some cooking into this main lesson block and actually bake some bread. And if you have the opportunity to actually grow wheat, then it would even complete the whole pitcher even more. All right, so then it goes into cooking grains, and so you can cook a variety of grains. This would be a really tasty main lesson block, and it goes into all the different grains. What I really like after that is that it has a story about each one, the kinds of people who have that grain as their staple, and a little bit about their environment. So you can really see the differences in the climate and the regions and the types of grains that grow in those different regions. All right, so it offers several lessons and lots of hands-on projects that you can do for the remainder of this main lesson block. There are a number of handwork projects, and I like how the curriculum offers some simple solutions to doing the handwork projects if you don't have some of the more pricey tools in order to do them. So for instance, for this weaving exercise, you can just do your own little loom on a piece of cardboard rather than buying a wooden loom. So I really like that they offer those kinds of suggestions in here. There's also spinning wool and again you can do your own little drop spindle without having to buy one. So I like that those suggestions are offered in here so that you don't have to worry about having all of these materials. You can also make some of them as well. All right so let's move on to the last 
three main lesson books. So these are going to be basically the history portion of the curriculum. Let's start with Myths and Culture, A Cod and Sumer. So this is basically one of the oldest civilizations. And so I would recommend doing this main lesson block before doing the two main lesson blocks on Hebrew Myths and Culture. So the table of contents for this main lesson block is going to go over all the different topic areas as well as all the painting activities that are going to be in here. So you'll definitely need to prepare yourselves with some uh, watercolor paper as well as watercolor paints for this particular main lesson block. I like the way that the main lesson book is basically going to be a lot of the watercolors that you're going to do for this main lesson block as well as your written narration and it explains how to put together a main lesson book using watercolor paper so that you can use the back side of each of the watercolors that you've done in order to do the narration for the facing page which would be a different watercolor. It even offers a solution on how to deal with the paint that spills onto the back side of the paper which happens if you've watercolored you know that that is an issue so that you can border the back of the page so that it doesn't look so unsightly and then again it also adds a border for your narration Alright, so there are a number of lessons that coordinate with this main lesson block and what I really like is that most of the information that you need is contained within this book. So if you don't have any additional resources, you can at least use the information that's provided in this main lesson book. Just a reminder, the main lesson books are basically the resource for the teacher. They are not meant to be read by the student and it's best if the teacher can pre-read the lessons ahead of time and then deliver the lessons in the form of a story rather than reading the lessons aloud. On many occasions I haven't been able to get myself prepared in time to do the lessons as a story and I have read them out of the main lesson book. They're really well written and so I find that even if I don't have time to prepare I, the students still get a lot out of me reading the main lesson. There are a lot of watercolor examples in this main lesson book which is really going to be helpful so that you can construct your lessons according to these different watercolors. I like how there are so many examples of what the watercolors are supposed to look like, especially if you haven't watercolored before. This type of watercolor associated with the main lesson might be new to you, and I like the way it breaks it down for the parent or the teacher in order to do these main lessons using these examples. Now, with this main lesson block, the lessons aren't going to be labeled out as lesson one or lesson two. I just went ahead and did that for myself so that I could kind of group these different activities together. In general, I would present the story on the first day and then on the second day we might do our watercolor and then on the third day we would do our written narration. And this took a little bit of planning because you want to be able to do your final draft narration on the correct watercolor page and so I found it a little bit easier to have my students do rough drafts of all of their narrations that way we wouldn't make a mistake on where their narration should go within the main lesson book since we chose to bind our main lesson book after we did our lessons. So we had a lot of loose papers and then when we're completely done we took it to an office supply store and they bound our main lesson book. All right, so this goes just through the rest of the lessons as well as a lot of watercolor examples. It's very complete. I found that I didn't need any additional resources for this main lesson block. All right, let's go through the last two main lesson blocks. They are on Hebrew, myths, and culture. We have creation and patriarchs and prophets and kings. And we decided to use our own resources for this particular main lesson block. So we did not go through either of these main lesson blocks the way the curriculum has suggested. So let me just go through this with you. Again, it 
Each book is going to provide a little bit of information on either the Waldorf philosophy, how to use this particular main lesson book, or how to organize your school year. So do read the beginning pages of all of the main lesson books, even if you're not going to do that main lesson book until later on in the year, because there's going to be valuable information in the first couple of pages that are going to relate to how to set up your day or your year or your main lesson books or how to use that particular main lesson book. All right, this is one book that it recommends getting some additional resource materials. We didn't get any of the resource materials that were suggested. Again, we used our own. So you can either use the resources that are suggested here, or you can tailor this main lesson block to suit your cultural and religious needs. Now, a lot of the Jewish prophets that are mentioned here happen to be ones that are in our religious uh, resource books, and so we used stories that were relevant to our religion that happened to contain the same stories, but I was able to teach them from uh, our religious perspective. So we didn't follow the same timeline for our lessons, and a lot of times we didn't follow the same stories exactly, but that's all provided here so that you can choose your own resource, and those resources are listed here. So Legends of the Bible or Golden Children's Bible, and that's where you can find the stories for these different lessons. All right, so then it's going to take you through the lessons for this main lesson block. What's a little bit different about this particular main lesson block is that it's also not going to break them down in lesson one, lesson two, lesson three. It's showing you all the lessons for the first six lessons and giving you enough background information for you to then create those lessons. So if you need more details, then this curriculum may not be the right one for you. But if you like to get the general idea of how to do the lessons, as well as some background information on how to create the content for those lessons, then this main lesson book and this curriculum would work just fine. I found that this worked really well for us because we could use our own resources and those stories would still relate to the stories that were offered in this main lesson book, but we were able to bring our own culture and our own religion into those stories. So you can see that it still contains a lot of background information and resources for the teacher in order to put together the main lesson block in uh, the Hebrew myths and culture. You can also see some examples on how to do the main lesson book. The main lesson book for this main lesson block is in the portrait orientation. So you can see that you just have blank white pages on both sides and the student will then do the drawing and do the narration here. And again, that narration may also coordinate with the spelling that the student will have done previously in the day or previously in the year. So you can see that there is overlap between a lot of these different main lesson blocks. Not all the lessons are going to be with watercolors. You can see that here they're done with crayons or color pencils. And this main lesson book is also going to give some uh, some lessons for the teacher so that she can then teach the student some of these different shading techniques for the illustrations related to the main lesson for the day. And so you can still use your stick crayons at this point, but I would recommend getting the Lyra color pencils these ones work really well and they're also thicker, so it's a little bit easier to get your color on your page, especially that you can see here that there's a lot of the same color going on, so it's a really broad picture and it shows some of these art techniques here on how to blend the colors together, which is really great. Of course, you can still use your crayons at this point, but it's a nice opportunity to transition into the color pencils. All right, so the last main lesson book is Hebrew Myths and Culture, Prophets and Kings. And again, this one, we used our own resources to put together the lessons. It suggests the different resources that you can use in order to get more information and more background for the main lesson block. This one is going to go over the, the traditions, the music, the food, 
the celebrations and the festivals related to this main lesson block. So you don't need to do this one separately from this main lesson block. These two really go together. So if your child is still working through a musical instrument, you may choose to play some of this music or to learn some of this music as part of the main lesson. There are recipes that you can do. There are different festivals that you can celebrate. And this book is going to go over all of those things for the main lesson book. And you can see that the form drawing reflects the lessons that you're going to find in this main lesson book. So it's going to continue with the form drawing. You can see that they're also a lot more complicated than the form drawing that you will see in grade one and two. Then it continues with the remainder of the lessons on Hebrew culture, prophets and kings, and you can use either the information that is provided in the book, but they recommend that you do get an additional resource because this doesn't have a lot in here. You really want to add more information or to build up all of these lessons because you can see here you've got lessons 41 to 45, Joshua, Samson, and Ruth, and the information here is quite minimal, so you will want to go and get additional resources to build up those five lessons and again it's going to do that for every section it will tell you the basic uh, the basic theme or what's going to be covered for those lessons and these lessons will all last a week and so having some additional information will help stretch out those lessons for the entire week all right so it continues to go through that i think it comes up to lesson 80 in here and there are of course more illustrations songs poems and other activities that you can do related to this main lesson block all right i hope that this curriculum review was helpful for you if you are thinking about getting the third grade curriculum by live education. If you want to see some of the other videos in this series, you can tap on the screen right now. If you have any questions, don't forget that you can leave them down below in the comment section.